Controlling large infestations of invasive species can be expensive and time consuming. The good news is that there are resources available to help you with the control of invasive species on your property. The Natural Resource Conservation Service offers cost sharing programs that you may be able to take advantage of to help you with control of invasive species on your property in addition to other natural resource concerns. There are also contractors including private consulting foresters and invasive species control contractors available to actually help you do the invasive species control work on your property if the scale of that work is beyond your capacity. You can consult with your local extension, Natural Resource Conservation Service, or Forester's Office in your counties to get information about how to access these assistance means. So one of the topics I uh, just want to discuss today is uh, one of our USDA's program. It's called the Environmental Quality Incentives Program which is the acronym we use is EQIP, or we say EQIP, and that is a cost share program to help individuals, producers, both agricultural producers, non-ag producers, livestock producers, to help implement conservation practices on their farm. I always get the question, why do I want to remove invasive plants? Well, a few years ago, uh, we were discussing invasive plants and the list was about five or so invasive species that are becoming problems in landscape and more typically woodlands. Now the list is probably upwards of 20 or 25 kind of uh, plants or species of concern, things we need to look out for. And that typically, especially in the, in the woodland or the forest land management arena, is that it makes forest land management very difficult, especially if a timber harvest is expected or that is one of the goals of that particular tract of land. If we have those invasive present, prior to that timber harvest that the forest professional can't very well plan a timber sale if we have all those invasives kind of just sitting in there idling and as soon as we do a harvest we turn on the lights so to speak for that particular forest very little competition for those invasive plants and they flourish in the past equip the invasive control has been a three-year effort to do that once you once you're funded the applications are available either online or at the usda service center it's fairly easy to uh, get in contact with us but it's as simple as just sending an email to pick up an application or to visit, set up a, a field visit. I first learned about EQUIP um, by attending the Walnut Council meetings. They're full of information and a lot of connections and people kept saying, oh, it's really important to remove invasive species. The EQUIP program really connected me to a lot of really helpful people. The first one was the district forester. He really helped me focus not on the whole property, but part by part by part so that I could feel like I was making progress. And secondly, I used a consulting forester and some, um, some warm bodies that he had um, to help me just do the physical labor because it is quite challenging physical labor. It's important to care about removing invasive plants if you have an interest in the sustainability of forestry. I'm really fascinated by what I find when I'm doing equip work in the woods, especially in highly dense areas where the invasive species are. It's bare ground underneath there and you don't see any seedlings come up but in a second or third round of equip um, activity I can begin to see seedlings of other species coming up hardwoods like white oak and black oak coming up so it's really interesting to see that what I'm doing now is going to have a, make a lot of difference in the future. So I started this not even paying attention to the invasive species. I don't even remember if we had invasive species when I was 16. It's been about 50 years. So um, now that I'm in it I can't stop. I'm just crazy about I see honeysuckle everywhere I look and I see autumn olive everywhere I look I still get a chance to go back into the black walnut stands but my first look always is to remove the invasives out of that those areas on the property the idea of getting a cost share was really appealing to me even though I didn't quite understand how it was going to work uh, it really was a high motivator for me to get started um, with the equip application so I'm, I'm glad that I did it and I'm actually though my contract is over right now I've set up a new contract for a conservation activity plan and hopefully that will include some more cost share um, that'll keep me motivated and help me pay for some extra help to come and work on the property with me. For me, having had my dad here and seeing how much he cared about this property, 
it's come to me to take care of it and it's like the best thing I do. My grandkids come here, they enjoy it, and I understand that if I don't remove the invasives as soon as I can and as best as I can, this property will probably be taken over by invasives. Already I can see with the ash dying and some of my huge old white oak trees that their lifespan is coming to an end and if that sunshine comes into the forest floor, the first thing that's gonna come in is invasive. So I'm going to battle them for the next generation. Looking back on the work that I've done now, balancing the recreational part, keeping trails open, timber production, and now invasive species removal, I think if Equip hadn't come along and helped me with the cost share and also with the advice on how to do the work, I don't think I would have done it. I don't think I would have known where to start. I'm really not thrilled about using chemicals, so it was really helpful to have people who knew what they were doing help me get started on that and show me the way. So now, again, I'm, I'm not going to stop because I'm, I'm in it to win it. If you're looking for additional information on woodland stewardship issues, be sure to check out the other videos in this series. Thanks for joining us for this video.